Hello, everyone. Welcome to Sticks and Bricks, a podcast that takes you behind the scenes of luxury custom home building. With me, Sherwin Loudermill, your host and president of Loudermill Custom Home, where we believe in the mantra, build it like it's yours. Have you ever wondered what goes into creating a custom dream home? Well, you're in the right place. In each episode, we'll dive deep into building science processes and construction business practices through interviewing leaders in the industry. We'll discuss the world of home design and construction by sharing stories, insights, and the secrets that make Loudermilk Homes the leader in Georgia and Western North Carolina. And here's something special for you. Stay tuned at the end of each episode for our Builder Pro Tip segment. We'll provide actual items and insights for you to use on your own projects so you can turn inspiration into action. At Sticks and Bricks, we want to make your journey into luxury custom home building both informative and practical. So buckle up, get ready for a fascinating ride through the world of custom luxury home design and construction. Let's build something extraordinary together. Welcome to Sticks and Bricks. Welcome everyone to another episode of Sticks and Bricks. I'll be your host, Sherwin Loudermilk with Loudermilk Custom Homes. I'm really excited about today's episode because we'll be talking with Brad Etheridge with Parkside, who is a distributor for DuPont products, but specifically what we work with is Tyvek. So Brad, welcome to the show. Hey, Sherwin, thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be a part of this. So looking forward to what's ahead of us today. All right, fantastic. Well, I'm gonna be asking you a lot of questions. We're gonna get into some geeky building science stuff, which is always cool. But to begin with, just tell me a little bit about what you do. So what, who is Parkside and, and what do you do for Parkside? So Parkside is the main um, distributor for DuPont products. We are a, a building products distributor. We actually distribute a lot of other brands, but here in Georgia, we focus on the Tyvek and the accessories for building envelope. Okay. And, and you guys have a direct connection with DuPont as Parkside? We provide field support for the DuPont products, as well as do handle most of the logistics for those products as well. Okay. So would we be buying directly from Parkside or do we buy from another entity? So we buy the products from DuPont. We warehouse them, we ship them. And then most of our relationships are directly with the dealers that you deal with, like Brand Vaughn or... 84 Lumber, Carter Lumber, BFS, Division 7, I think is one of your main suppliers for our our products. Okay, fantastic. So what do you do at Parkside? I'm a building envelope specialist. So part of my responsibility is to provide build support, make sure that our customers are getting the most out of their products. We also have give advice on maybe design issues or some engineering flaws, but really just to provide the best support we can behind those products that we're selling. That's fantastic. And, you know, we both have the homes in the background with our Tyvek wraps, but these are both houses that were built by a lot of In fact, it's the same house built by a lot of homes. Tell us a little bit about Tyvek and the background of Tyvek. So Tyvek is a, a waterproof membrane, but it allows air to come through. Can you kind of explain all that stuff? Why is that important and what it does for a house? So, yes, sir. I can tell you um, what kind of sets us aside from our competitors. Tyvek is a type one air barrier. So we do not allow air to come through, but we're breathable. I guess that's where that can be confusing sometimes. The breathable part would be our vapor permeability. Uh, vapor permeability is rated in perms. So the higher the perm rating of an of a material, the faster vapor can come through that object. The lower the perm, the slower that process is. Um, Tyvek perm value is also what sets us aside from the others. We're 56 perm, um, pretty much rated out at 56 to 58 perm, which is significantly higher than our competitors. Us giving us that allowing the house to breathe motto that we stick by. <laughs> All right. So it lets the water bake. So basically let's say we put brick on top of this Tyvek, we have a, an air barrier between the brick and the Tyvek. So water can, if it penetrates through the brick, because brick is a source that can allow water to come through, it hits the Tyvek and then it won't cut, go through the Tyvek. It basically runs down, down that Tyvek and out. So it doesn't penetrate the house. Absolutely not. We hold out 100% of bulk water, so we're a water retardant, but we do allow that vapor to pass through. There's a pretty neat apparatus, I guess, that they have at 
the Building Knowledge Center. It's a Bunsen burner that has a coffee, a coffee maker on it. It's got the Tyvek that's pretty much sealed right around that coffee mug. And the Bunsen burner turns on when the Tyvek starts to evaporate, it turns into a vapor, You or the, wa the water turns into a vapor. You can actually see that coming out of the Tyvek. And then once it gets to the top and turns back down to a solid, it actually comes back down and sits directly on top of the product. So it's really neat. It allows the house to breathe, allows that relative humidity and dew point in our market to freely move through your wall system. I love it. I mean, we, we've obviously picked Tyvek as our brand because of a lot of research that we've done. Let's talk a little bit. I mean, I, I don't want to go into the negative about uh, the other brands, but let's talk about a couple of the competitors and why we feel and you feel that Tyvek is a more superior brand. So in, in my opinion, there are really three brands that kind of capture the market, Tyvek being the number one brand. You also have Tyvek, which is actually a product that that Ty DuPont sold, right? Because it, it wasn't even designed for house wrap and it has a special product. We can talk a little bit about that. Then there's the zip system, which isn't even a wrap. It's basically the green boards that fit onto a house, onto the OSB, and then you have to tape the sides. And I remember when you invited me to construction instruction in Denver, which is just a phenomenal building science gurus location. And they do test and show. We started seeing some of these differences, which was fascinating to me, but tell me a little bit, let's start with Typar. What's the true difference between a Tyvek and a Typar? And why do you think Tyvek is so much better? So Tyvek is non-woven. It's basically polyolefin that is stranded out and spun bonded is the process that we call that when it's made, but basically it's stretched out polyolefin there's no holes in it to give us that perm value. And the difference between that and Typar is, is basically, and we did sell that as a flower bed underlayment. That's basically where that originated from. What Typar did was they put a waxy film on top of that material and to meet the perm value requirement to be considered a house wrap, they had to make that material permeable with the wax on top of it. So to meet that perm requirement um, of code, they basically rolled a, a roller with a bunch of microscopic needles over the material to perforate it. So type R, the difference between us and type R mainly is we're obviously a type one air barrier. We're not gonna let the air in from the exterior wall system, but we don't have any holes in our product. We're not perforated. So that's the main difference between type R and type A There's those, is those perforations. I think I remember when we were in construction instruction, this was fascinating. They were talking about the difference in the products and they were basically saying, look, both products are very good. If you look at them, at, you know, both of them are going to do the job. But then they said, it, we also have to think about the install. So you have guys, you know, framers that are up there or whoever's installing the, the Tyvek wrap or the Typar wrap, and they're up there and their tool belt is scratching it and, and rubbing against it. And we did a little test and we just did a, a slight scratch on the Tyvek and a slight scratch on the Typar, and we put water on both of them, and it was amazing. Instantly, the Typar started leaking, but the Tyvek was holding because you don't have that wax on top of it. And I think that was the reason why construction instruction like Tyvek and we like Tyvek is that it took out the human element of making mistakes where the guys, when they're up there, if they're scratching, it kind of takes that out of it. So they can scratch the Tyvek and it's fine as long as they don't you know, put a hole in it, obviously. Absolutely. Tyvek is a very durable product. We stand behind uh, outlasting the materials that are already on the building. So we really feel like we're going to last 50 to 100 years. That is true about the waxy film. You're going to, the job site's rig rigorous. Let's be real. There's going to be ladders leaning up against that wall system. Hammers are going to be dropped. And yeah, that can abrase the tie bar, which can compromise it in those areas. But let's talk a little bit about um, the ZIP system. And there's a few other program systems out there. I think George Power has one and obviously ZIP, but these are the boards that come in in OSB. So they're four by eight sheets and you pop them up on, you know, just onto the wall, like you would regular OSB, but then it has a film on top of it. And you're essentially having your framer tape the sides to keep that waterproofing. And everyone knows that I'm not a fan of it. We've tried it in two houses and failed at both of them. Tell us a little bit about why the Tyvek concept of putting a house wrap around your house versus using this newer system that, that a lot of builders are starting to move towards 
Why is it so much better, in your opinion, than the ZIP system? Well, I think both systems are good. Like you said, it's all application installer uh, issues. You know, 70% of builder callbacks are moisture related. Over half of those are from installer issues. So the, the drawbacks that I see with ZIP is the, you don't have any proper shingling. There's no shingle method. We've been doing that on the roofs for years, starting at the bottom, overlapping as you go up the roof. That's what holds water out the best. It's happened for many years. It's been working. So the Tyvek is actually the same way. We wrap the house. We protect all of that wood. You start at the bottom. There's proper shingling with everything that's in place, which allows the moisture to run off the house. We always say don't tuck your raincoat into your underpants. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you want that on here, but uh, that, that's always a good saying. It makes the installers laugh when we say it. So. Basically, you want that proper shingling. The zip system basically has butted seams with tape on top of them. So any building is going to expand and contract. There's going to be things that are happening with weather changes that are causing that building to move and expand and contract. What happens to those tape lines when that starts happening to the wood wall system? I feel like it can pull those tapes, tape seams apart or tape seams apart and compromise you in those areas. We're, we're also seeing some problems with overdriven fasteners with zip, which is another, goes back to the installer, not having his uh, air tool set at the right PSI to drive those in or not hammering them, which more than likely these days, they're not even gonna attempt to do. You know, it's all gonna be pneumatic. Yeah, I think the zip system is even more prevalent to error from the installers than even the tie par of scratching because you're now having your framer be your waterproofer, right? So your framer is going up there and they're taping and they're putting everything in. They don't know about, you know, they don't truly understand waterproofing as opposed to having a company that focuses on waterproofing come out and waterproof your house with a Tyvek system or any kind of house wrap system. So I've always liked the additional coverage that we have with the Tyvek uh, compared to that. Well, Tell me a little bit. So one of the things I love about working with you is that you come out and do site visits. The house behind you that's in the picture, you came out to this house once and looked at it. In fact, you come out twice. Once right after we house wrap it, you come out and do an inspection. This isn't a county inspection or client inspection. This is just us trying to make sure that we're the best that we can be. So you come out there and you double check after our builders have checked and after our quality control guy has checked just to make sure we didn't miss anything. And there are times where you come up with a few things here and there, and then you come up again um, for a second inspection once we penetrate it. Can you talk a little bit about what you're looking for in those inspections? Yeah, that first inspection, Sherwin, I'm just looking for um, the house wrap to be installed with proper shingle method, starting at the bottom of the wall, six inch overlaps of every seam, are the seams taped? have the installers cut your window openings out properly just making sure that you've got that first weather barrier install correct and everything's dried in properly the second trip is more of a risk management and you know quality control walk right before your cladding is applied i think that's where we bring the most impact to the job site i'm really walking that thing from corner to corner we provide the punch list document, PDF document to you that kind of has photos with concerns and ways to rectify those concerns on there. Very illustrated. I think it's very easy to follow. And essentially what I'm looking, what I'm looking to do is make sure that I don't see any risk factor before you, before you go into cladding and that you have a solid envelope right there before you move towards cladding. That what you do, Brad, is just phenomenal for us because all of us builders that have been in the business for a while know that water is our arch enemy, right? We have more problems, especially in the Southeast with humidity issues and, and a lot of rainfall. We have a lot of problems with water. So having that last line of defense, having you come out and, and take a look at it is just is just amazing for us. And it's very helpful. I, I'll tell the listeners, if, if you guys are builders and you're not doing this and taking advantage of this, you should, because it's such a great way to make sure that you're providing a, a, a superior product. Let's talk about the, the install of the windows and how we do that. You know, when I first started my career, we were having problems with window 
windows leaking here and there. And we were wondering what, why are we having window issues? And you know, 95% of the time, it's not the window that's failing. It's the install of the house wrap to the, the tape and how you're installing it. And through a lot of back and forth and investigation, your uh, insight, we came up with um, a concept called an AMA B method uh, with a little twist that we do. I think you said we're, we're one of the only builders you've seen that does that extra twist, but can you tell everybody what is AMA B? So why are there so many different ways to flash a window? In my opinion, when you flash something closest to the wall system, you have a more secure flashing detail which is what you guys are doing. AMA method B is, and you guys are adding wrap the cavity in, protecting that entire window opening, which is going to lengthen the lifetime of that opening tremendously. It's protecting all of that wood in there where, like you said, water is the devil when it comes to building. So it's, we say it's not if, but when that window is going to leak. When it does and those windows start failing a long time down the road for you, you're still going to have a good opening to replace windows when that time comes. But what you guys are doing is I'm a method B where you cut the entire opening out of the window and you're actually putting butyl flashing on the jams, the window sill, and the window head. So that entire opening wood from interior to exterior is completely protected from any kind of water that may get in there ever. You know, wrapping, and I know we were talking about it, we said, well, we don't necessarily have to wrap the top or we don't necessarily have to wrap the sides. And I'm just looking at the wood being exposed. And, and I just said, no, let's wrap, let's wrap the entire window casing just in case something comes up. Again, humidity issues in Atlanta, you know, a lot of rainfall in Atlanta and in Cashiers, North Carolina, where we build in, in North Carolina. I think that has the highest grossing waterfall of any city in the United States. I think we beat out Seattle last year for more rainfall. So we want to make sure that we're protecting that. And I know I've had a couple of people say, well, I think it's a little bit of an overkill. It's not if you want to make sure your your water is not coming into your home and then creating mold and, and, and issues in the future, you know. Well, tell me a little bit about, you, you talked about like some adhesives and things of that nature. Why is it so important to use Tyvek products for your adhesives? Well, we are formulated to work well together. Um, a lot of the stuff that is on the market, we're not really, we don't test the compatibility. So we know that we're compatible with the products that we produce. I can give you a quick rundown of the flashings. There's three types of flashings in the market. You have acrylic flashings, you have butyl based flashings, and you have asphalt based flashings. So what sets the butyl, which is what our products are made out of, 100% butyl. We're non-VOC. There's no volatile organic compounds in butyl. It does not break down. Basically, in this cooling climate that we're building in, it bonds stronger with heat and time. That's the makeup of butyl. So the longer it's on that wall or the longer it's on that jam, the more one that it's going to become with that wood and it's just going to add a lifetime of protection. The acrylics are more like your clear flashings, kind of like what you put a box in the attic with the clear tape. That's an acrylic tape. Most of the time when it goes through the heat of the attic and all those rigorous temperatures up there, it fails. And, and that box that you packed the previous year for Christmas is, is wide open when you go get it out the next year. So that's, those products are really good for cool heating climates, like up north. So acrylics work well in a cool climate, but not so much with the heat. And then you've got your asphalt base. They have volatile organic compounds in them, petroleum. That's their main piece of, they really go on aggressively in this market, but they actually fail when the weather gets warmer. You'll see those drooping off the wall, oozing, just not really what I want behind my wall system for sure. But. So in my opinion, the butyl is the way to go hands down in a cooling climate like we're in. And then also Tyvek will give us a warranty, right? What, what's the warranty if we're using a full Tyvek system? So you get a 10, 10 year product and labor warranty. And with the risk management walks, we're able to work with those installers. Guys that are installing for you and that install Tyvek under that warranty have to be certified. Actually go through a eight hour training session and three of that in classroom environment where they have to pass a test to move forward to the next stage. And then 
I'm spending lots of time with them on site training, retraining, and just making sure that they're installing the products per the manufacturer's guidelines. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's great. And everything works together properly. So why not? Why not get the warranty and kind of put it all together at this, the same way at the bottom of the windows. Yeah, um, we put what's called a, a windscreen on. What, what's important? And, and I think when you were explaining to me, not many people do that. Not many builders. We also build in North Carolina on the top of some mountains where we have massive wind issues. But we've decided to just standardize with this windscreen across all of our homes. What does that do, and and what's the purpose of it? So even for the size homes that you're building, you're I would consider you a passive builder, wouldn't you say? That's your energy efficiency, you're trying to build a passive home. So the amount of air loss in the house is going to affect your energy efficiency, how well that house is able to stay comfortable, how well it heats and cools itself. So anywhere that you've got an air leak that's not addressed can cause problems to hurt that energy efficiency. So with our window detail and the window detail that you're following, we never um, recommend putting any kind of sealant or any kind of flashing on the bottoms of those windows. Um, like I said earlier, it's not if, but when that window's going to leak, at least if you set it up right and leave the bottom of that window opening open, when it does, it's going to have a way to get out and hit that drainage plane of the tie back and get away from the wall. So the wind skirt that's been added, Typically builders in high wind areas like hurricane coastlines, hurricane areas, they, that's probably code in those areas. It's recommended highly in certain areas of Georgia and that area that you're building in, in North Carolina because of those wind lows that they're receiving there. But what the wind skirt does is basically cover that bottom flange where we've actually left it open for drainage and it prevents air wind washing from going in that or actually you losing too much air out of the bottom of those windows yeah no and i think it's so important because the wind issues that we have in north carolina are incredible and this is basically a second barrier that prevents air from coming in but let's talk about the air and the controls you know when i first went down this journey um, of trying to become you know an energy efficient style builder I was under the notion that, hey, look, you want your house to breathe heavily, right? So why are we doing all this stuff? Let's not put, you know, foam in. Let's not put, you know, huge house wraps in because we want the house to have the ability to have airflow. If you don't have airflow in your house, you're going to end up with stale air and you're going to end up with issues with mold and things of that nature. And we're seeing that a lot more. I mean, I, I'm hearing about it over and over and over with builders that don't truly understand the building science behind it they're putting up some house wrap and then all of a sudden they're getting mold inside their house but tell us why it's so important that we actually do this now we're going to talk in another segment about the air quality in the house with air conditioning systems and things of that nature but why is it so important that we control the airflow that's coming like we tighten that house and make it as tight as we possibly can so basically that's going to be for your energy efficiency piece. Your air conditioner is, I'll tell you, when I grew up, I don't think they had any codes for uh, energy efficiency and ACH, air changes per hour, you know, the blower door testing. I remember sleeping by a window that had our unit outside and I never remember that unit ever cutting off. It just ran the entire lifetime of us living there. And as time has progressed, codes are actually moving more towards a lower ACH. I remember when I first started this job, it was seven or eight ACH. And then less than two years of being into this position, it went down to five, which is where it's at now. So the, the code requirement is actually forcing us to that direction. But I think it has more to do with comfort, comfortability. You know, the most energy efficient box that I can think of offhand is probably my Yeti cooler and it's airtight and I can put ice in there and Coke cans in there for about two or three days and not have to replace that ice or, or replace that air in there, right? That cold air. I can put a brisket in there and leave it for four or five hours and open it up and it's still steamy hot in there. So I'm not quite sure if we're ready to be a, a Yeti cooler for a house, but I think the tighter 
the easier it is to control that comfortability and that airflow inside the home. Another example that I always use is the most comfortable place that most people tell me that they are is in their vehicle. The vehicle is probably a net zero. When those doors close, you've got a tight box basically that you're riding in. My wife can set her AC in the passenger seat on 68 if she's feeling hot and I can put it on 71 because she's freezing me out and both of us are comfortable inside that home or inside the vehicle. So I think that's where things are moving and it's just all about comfortability. Yeah, I think that when we were at construction instruction, I think the analogy they gave was 50, 60 years ago when we were building and there was no house wrap, you know, water was coming in the house. But the reason why you didn't have in massive amounts of mold and issues is because it was so open that the air would just cycle through, right? And so it would dry that air, that water that came in pretty quickly because nothing was holding it together. Now that we're getting tighter and tighter, that water that penetrates in has no place to go. And, and I love your analogy of a Yeti cooler, right? So you're holding it in, but now that water's in there and it's not going anywhere. We, we need to get that out. So first thing is we need to make it really tight so that the water doesn't come into the house. Then we need to control that airflow back and forth for the health of the people that are living in there. And, and a lot of that, and like I said, that's going to be another episode where we, we really get into the HERS rating and the healthy living inside of a home of air conditioning where you want to have, you don't want to even have an, an oversized, you don't, you don't want to have an undersized, you don't want to have an oversized air conditioning unit because you want that flow of air. You want dehumidification in the summertime. You want humidification in the wintertime. There's a lot of different things that you can look at and, and play with, uh, but it all starts with tightening that house, right? So you're kind of the first line of defense in the Tyvek to make sure that that house has the least amount of gaps and holes in it as we start moving into the rest of the building science and having clean air inside your home. Oh. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, do you have anything else to chat about with Tyvek? Is there anything else that you'd like to tell the listeners? Not that I can think of offhand. I think we covered everything. I, I would say that Loudermilk Homes is definitely leagues ahead of a lot of builders that are around you, Sherwin. I mean, I've even walked in and caught your guys checking airflow that's moving through your HVAC system one day. Just the quality control that you guys have set up, I'm just grateful to be a part of it, a small part of it, but enjoy working with you guys. Thanks for the partnership. Well, we really appreciate it too. We couldn't have done this without you and your training and uh, expertise and pulling me all the way to Denver so that we can study and learn from some of the best science geeks in the nation. So we cannot thank you enough for coming on the show and being a good partner for us. Thank you. All right, take care, Brad. And that concludes another episode of Sticks and Bricks. I hope you enjoyed our journey into the world of custom luxury home design and construction. Before we say goodbye, let's dive into our Builder Pro Tip segment where we've broken down today's episode into actual items. Remember, turning knowledge into action is the key to making your dream home a reality. Welcome to the Builder Pro Tip segment. We just heard from Brad Etheridge about the significance of Tyvek and how to flash windows and things of that nature. So our Builder Pro Tip for anybody looking to build a home is make sure you're getting that house wrap and the window install and the, the door install inspected. If your builder doesn't have a third party inspection company to do that, which is what we do with Tyvek, please go out and, and get your own. Make sure that the install is correct. Make sure that the window flashing is correct. That's where the majority of the problems come into a house with leaking and you want your house to be airtight. And so having these, this last minute inspection right before the sheeting or stone or brick or whatever's going on in the exterior of your house is so critical to the success of your home in the future. Good luck. I hope you found these tips valuable. If you have questions or want to share your experiences, please reach out. We're here to support you. Thank you for being part of Sticks and Bricks and stay tuned for more inspiration. Make sure to subscribe below. Until next time, I'm Sherwin Loudermilk signing off. Thank you for listening.